Welcome to another episode of The Prince Scientific, where I, Mohana Basu, take you through some of the top science stories of the week from across the globe. Lichens are composite living structures comprising of algae and fungus and are a major food source for reindeers. However, a new study warns that these symbiotic structures are unable to adapt quickly to changing climate and are likely to get wiped out. Researchers found that the predicted rate of modern climate change vastly exceeds the rate at which algae have evolved in the past. This means that certain parts of where they are found today are likely to become inhospitable in the future. The team examined an algae called Tribuchia. When this algae takes up residence inside a lichen, they live together with the fungus as one. The fungus provides the physical structure while the algae provide food through photosynthesis. There are more than 7,000 kinds of lichen powered by Trebuchia, making it the most common algal pattern in lichens. If the earth continues warming at the rates predicted, it will be too hot for many Trebuchia species in parts of their ranges and this could have impact in other organisms. The team determined that it could take hundreds of thousands of years for Trebuchia to adapt to the temperature changes that we are on course to see in the next century. This does not mean that all Trebuchia lichens are destined to become extinct. The scientists think that climate change will influence how algae interact with fungi in the future. Losing lichens could have a profound effect on their ecosystems. Lichens are the dominant vegetation on 7% of Earth's surface. They play roles in ecosystem by retaining moisture, playing a part in the carbon and nitrogen cycle, and some of them are used by animals for food or nesting materials. Meanwhile, scientists have confirmed that using advanced nuclear imaging techniques that a 93 million year old crocodile found in Australia devoured a juvenile dinosaur based on remains found in fossilized stomach contents. The discovery of the fossils in 2010 was made by the Australian Age of Dinosaurs Museum in association with the University of New England. The crocodile was about 2 to 2.5 meters in length. It was found in a massive shattered boulder. Early neutron imaging scans of one rock fragment from the boulder detected bones of the small chicken-sized juvenile dinosaur in the gut, which is yet to be formally identified as a species. The dinosaur bones are entirely embedded within the dense ironstone rock. Investigators think that it is likely that the crocodile was caught up in a mega flood event, was buried and died suddenly. Also this week, NASA's Imaging X-ray Polarimetry Explorer, which was launched in December last year, has delivered its first image, remains of a star that exploded in the 17th century. Explosion of Cassiopeia A have swept up surrounding gas, heating it to a high temperature and accelerating cosmic ray particles to make a cloud that glows in X-ray light. Other telescopes have studied Cassiopeia A before, but IXPE will allow researchers to examine it in a new way. In this image, the saturation of the magenta color corresponds to the intensity of the X-ray light observed by IXPE. It overlays high-energy X-ray shown in blue from the NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory. Chandra and IXPE with different kinds of detectors capture different levels of sharpness. A key measurement that scientists will make with IXPE is called polarization, a way of looking at how X-ray light is oriented as it travels through space. The polarization of light contains clues to the environment where the light originated. IXPE's instruments also measure the energy, the time of arrival, and the position in the sky of the X-rays from cosmic sources. With polarization data from Cassiopeia A, IXPE will allow scientists to see for the first time how the amount of polarization varies across the supernova remnant, which is about 10 light years in diameter. Researchers are currently working with the data to create the first ever X-ray pol polarization map of the object. Also this week, a new study shows that repeated heading in football can cause changes in the blood patterns within a player's brains, potentially interfering with signaling pathways. In a study conducted in football players in Norway, researchers 
discovered specific alterations in levels of microRNAs in the brain. The team analyzed blood samples from 89 professional players in Norway. Blood samples were taken from players after head impacts in matches showed specific changes in certain microRNA levels whose numbers were unaffected by the other high-intensity exercise. Accidental head injuries were found to alter the levels of eight microRNAs. Researchers suggest that microRNAs may also be able to differentiate injury severity. This is Mohana Basu, Special Correspondent at The Print. If you like our work, do consider paying for a subscription to The Print. You can do so through the link in the description box below.